It may seem contradictory to say that there can be potential energy stored in covalent bonds given that energy is released when bonds form and that breaking of bonds requires energy. The reason bond energy is potential energy is that bond breaking is not done in isolation. The breaking of bonds puts the atoms involved into very energetically unfavorable states so that they end up quickly reacting with other atoms and molecules to form new bonds. This is what we call chemical reactions. In chemical reactions, the starting molecules are called reactants. During the reaction, bonds in these molecules are broken, creating atoms with unstable electron arrangements. These atoms quickly recombine, forming different molecules called products. The amount of energy stored or released in a chemical reaction is the difference between the energy required to break one set of bonds and the energy released when new bonds are formed. If breaking the bonds in the reactants require less energy than is released when the bonds in the products form, then the reaction releases energy. If breaking the bonds in the reactants require more energy than is released when the bonds in the products form, the reaction requires energy to be added in order for it to proceed. But when the reaction is complete, the energy added is stored in the bonds of the products. This energy can be recovered by running the reaction in reverse. Consider the combustion of, of the fuel propane, which is a molecule made of three carbon atoms covalently bound to eight hydrogen atoms. Starting the combustion process requires a small amount of external energy, such as the flame from a match. This energy is needed to break some of the bonds in the propane. Once these bonds are broken, the carbon and hydrogen atoms will react to form new bonds in order to get back to more stable arrangements. In the presence of oxygen, they will form the most energetically favorable bonds possible, which in this case are the carbon-oxygen double bonds in carbon dioxide and the oxygen-hydrogen single bonds in water. The formation of these bonds release more energy than is needed to break the bonds in the propane and the oxygen molecules, resulting in the release of that excess energy. A small amount of the energy released as water and carbon dioxide mo molecules form will break bonds in more propane molecules, causing the reaction to continue. Once started, the reaction will keep going until either all of the propane or all of the oxygen is used up. In this way, a small amount of energy combined with propane and oxygen will cause the molecules to recombine to form carbon dioxide and water, resulting in the release of energy equal to the difference between the amount of energy released as the bonds in the carbon dioxide and water form and the energy needed to break the original bonds in the propane and the oxygen. The bigger the difference between these values, the greater the amount of energy the reaction will release. To drive a similar reaction in the opposite direction, plants use energy from the sun to break the bonds in carbon dioxide and water and recombine the atoms into molecular oxygen and sugars, thereby storing electromagnetic energy from the sun as potential energy in chemical bonds.